Welcome to part two of making this needle felted Jack Russell Terrier. In this portion, we're going to be focusing on building up the basic body structure using core wool. I started by taking the core wool and wrapping it tightly around the armature. The tighter that you can wrap it, the less stabbing that you're going to have to do in the long run to get air out and make it more dense. Right now, the video is actual speed. It's not sped up, but most of this video will be sped up, but it isn't time-lapse, so if you need to, you can choose to slow the speed down in the viewing options on YouTube. I'm going to continue adding pieces of the core wool in small sections at a time. Each piece I will attach to the previous piece and wrap it very tightly and then felt it so that it's secure. I'm not going to focus on getting the entire thing super densely felted or perfectly smooth yet. I'm just going to try and build up the bulk of the body and once there's most of that built up and most of the body is secured it'll be important to, at that point, really focus on getting it smooth and very densely felted. One thing that's really important when you start to wrap the wool around the legs is to keep the legs very thin. In fact, I would recommend taking a smaller piece of wool than what I'm using right here so that you can really get thin legs. It's really easy to build up the bulk of the leg, but it is really hard to keep trying to felt too much wool more and more tightly just to make it look thin. Um, this is an okay amount. I can still work with this, but it, it's kind of pushing it a little and it'd be probably safer to start with less and just gradually build up the wool. Here I'm just going to keep having to tighten up this wool that's in especially the lower part of this leg just so that it shrinks it up a little and makes it uh, thinner.
The upper portion of the dog's leg is thicker than the lower portion, so that's why in this section I've wrapped the wool a couple more times and I'm allowing it to be a thicker portion of the leg. But again, just it's best to build up slowly to the thickness that you want for the legs because it's so easy to get the legs too thick. And it's important to remember that these needles break easily. So whenever you're working with an armature, there is the risk of the needles breaking if you aren't careful in how you stab the needle. If you feel resistance from the wire, back off. Um, I try to sometimes go at a little bit of an angle to the wire so that I'm less likely to break the needle, but I do break needles sometimes. And that's why I'm using the black needle that I have here. It's a 36T, so it's a thicker gauge needle, and so it's less likely to break, but it's not impossible. As um, the wool becomes more dense, it's a lot harder to use a needle that's this thick of a gauge. So you will probably want to shift to a thinner gauge needle even on the legs and even on the places where there's armature as the wool becomes more dense. So something like the 40T or the 42T gauge needle is better when the wool becomes very dense, even though it's easy to break. So this one here, the yellow needle, is a 40T. And sometimes I will use even the 42T just because it gets difficult to press that thick of a needle into the wool. But again, needles do break, so it's good to have extra and just take your time. I know this looks like I'm going so fast, but this actually is pretty slow and it's a long process <laughs> to do this. So don't be in a rush and just try to 
take your time and enjoy what you're doing. Here I'm taking a small piece of wool and I'm rolling it to create a shape that can look like the upper portion of the front leg, which would be where the humerus is, and it would join at the elbow. It's about, it looks like maybe a 45 degree angle that that bend is that I'm trying to create the look of. So there's not actually wire right here, but I just want to make sure that it has the right look of having the upper portion of the front leg filled out. So this is just a sculpting portion with the wool. And we'll want that on both sides. So the right and left portion, I'm putting another one on the dog's right right here, just so that both upper portions of the front legs have that definition. And I just really wanted to build up the rib cage area a little bit more so I took a small piece of wool that I rolled up and I'm adding it to the chest area between the front legs.
So just to take a look at what we have so far and the shaping that we have so far, just kind of blocking out the basic shapes of the legs and the rib cage and the uh, torso area. Now we're going to work on painting the eyes. I don't know exactly what color that brown is. I'm guessing it's some, um, maybe like a raw sienna. I'll try and figure that out and put it in the description. I'm blending it with black so that I can get a dark reddish brown for the eye color on this particular dog, but you can use whatever eye color you want for your dog. And once I get the color dark enough, I'm painting the back side only of these safety eyes. They're acrylic safety eyes. So when you paint just the back side, there's already a pupil that's there and you just paint the back side and let it dry. And I like to keep a damp paper towel on hand just to touch up any little bits of paint that may have come onto the front side of the eye. Just working on building up the thickness of the head at this point and there is plant matter that's in wool especially core wool that hasn't been highly processed it is washed wool but there's still sometimes little bits of alfalfa or grass that from time to time you just have to pull them out as you work on your project right now the head is really thick looking but it's actually not very densely felted yet so I will be making this a lot more narrow than it appears at the moment. You can see there's still a lot of air in this wool. You can really still squeeze it, so my intent is to really get this felted tightly and not be quite so big and fluffy.
I'm going to start adding some thickness to the back of the neck along the, the base of the neck right above the shoulder blades. Next, I'm going to put some placeholder eyes in place using this awl. I will poke into the wool just to widen a little hole to be able to fit the eye. And again, these eyes are not painted. The painted ones are still drying. I'm just getting these in there so that I can start really forming the wool tightly around the eyes in place. So I'm just kind of working a little bit on narrowing the shape of where the muzzle is going to be and the area under the eyes. But the rest of the shaping of the face, I'm going to start working with the actual colored wools. So that will be in the next portion of this tutorial. Mm -hmm. 